Yeah, yeah, some of that. It should go digital, and I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove of Bastards. 20. All right, today we got Deja Doll jumping off the porch with us today. Yeah, showgirl Deja Doll, some of that, politely ratchet, jumping off the porch, dirty glove, bastards. Yeah, some of that. For sure. What's going on with you today? Shit, we just sitting here, you know, we in Atlanta, you know, just networking, just getting this music push, just, you know, just stepping, just. <laughs> get popping it. Yeah, just, you know, trying to get stuff in motion, just trying to get everything out there. For sure. It's a pleasure to have to, you on the porch today. Have to stop by. Have to stop by. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on the porch today, for sure. So how are you feeling about 2022 so far? 2022 so far, honestly, I just feel like I ain't waiting on nobody. I don't care what you got going on. If it don't got nothing to do with me, I don't care. Like, I'm keeping my foot right where it's been at on these necks. You feel me? Like... It's just pressure, it's game time, you feel me? It's been game time, like, it's some of that. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. You feel me? So for those who wouldn't even know, how would you describe life back at home in Youngstown, Ohio? Youngstown, Ohio? I mean, it's Youngstown, Ohio. Um, a lot of envious, you know, a lot of jealous. You feel me? I feel like me personally, I don't get a lot of love, and that's okay, because I get a lot of love elsewhere, Detroit, Atlanta, South Dakota, you feel me? Those places, like, so it's all right, but yeah, home is, I could talk about that for a couple, for a few hours, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, it's just, you feel me? I lost my daddy to the city, lost homies to the city, like, especially, like, this last year, like, I lost three homies in, like, a matter of four months type shit, like, so I'm just cool on my city, like, good on my city type shit, like, you know. <laughs> so when would you say you jumped off the porch? Um, I jumped off the porch when I was 18, you know, fresh out of high school type shit, you know. I was fortunate enough uh, to meet a man, um, had a pimp when I was 18, 18, 19 type shit. And just show me the game, you feel me, like, just, you feel me, like, just show me how to live, just how to survive on my own, like, just how to get it, you know. <laughs> like I said, there's a whole lot of three or going on here, type shit. For sure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women talk down on pimping, right? Yeah. But you just said, you know what I'm saying, it taught you a lot. So how would you describe your pimping experience? Um, honestly, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I appreciate because he go now, but I know he'd be proud of me, you know, sitting here, especially sitting here with y'all right now. But it was just amazing, you feel me? Like, I'm not out here just, you know, effing on dudes just because I'm horny and I'm, no, like, you gotta really be about a bag. I got bills to be paid. I got interviews to book. I got studio time. I got videos. I got, I look good. It's a rollie on my wrist, not an MK, you feel me? Like, yeah, like, Mm -mm. It was just the best thing, like, it just saved my life, 25, no kids, you feel me, no baby daddies, no niggas hounding me, you feel me, can't talk to me crazy, like, at all. <laughs> it was just perfect, you know, it was just perfect. A lot of people, they talk about how they had bad experience, he ain't never beat me, he ain't never made me do no drugs, they never, none of that, you feel me, like, I'm very fortunate. He just showed me how to be a woman, if you ask me. That's a real spill. <laughs> So how did you end up on Jerry Springer back in 2016? Um, Jerry, the infamous Jerry episode, pretty much I originally was trying to take this one girl on there because like she did some weird da 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 woo slime ball, yeah, you know, but it wasn't about no niggas, so they wasn't really too much interested in what it was, but they was interested in me because I'm pretty and, you know, woo. So just pretty much they was on some, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, we still want you to, you know, and they basically put together a little skit with me and some other girl named Deja. Um, I ain't know the girl, I ain't know the man, everything that happened on that episode was false. I ain't do none of that, you feel me? They ain't, they ain't say he gave me no money, so we know we ain't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? But yeah, but all, the fight was, yeah, you feel me, bitch, ran up and got, you yeah, don't play with me. I don't play them games. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I do not play them games. Man. So you love going viral. Pretty much. I mean, you know, I'm the center of attention. You feel me? I be setting trends. You, I be doing, you know, Deja Dawg shit. You know, Deja Dawg do as Deja Dawg does. You know, so, you know, drinking champagne out the bottle. Can I get a little bit? Like, so you know I gotta ask you about that viral mug shot. <laughs> <laughs> My mug shot, the mug shot, everybody loved that mug shot. I don't know why everybody's so attracted to that mug shot. Everybody found it sexy. Like, you know, but yeah, the viral mug shot came about. And it was back, you know, back to dealing with my lifestyle and what I do, you know, besides, you know, the rapping and stuff, you know, just how I've been able to get it out the mud, you know, all these years. You know, this guy pretty much, you know, had some money, you know. And, you know, we got out, long story short, he was on some weird, like, you know, trying to do some weird shit, you know, like. And I wasn't with that. You know, it was on some like you can go. He on some oh, I'm calling my brother. My brother finna come pick me up. How your brother finna come get, pick you up in your car downstairs? You follow me here type shit. You feel me? Like so, I'm, you know, I had to pipe on him, whatever. You know, like when I say leave, you gonna leave. Like that's it. That's all. Like mm -hmm, you feel me? Like, politely, politely, ratchetly, escort him on, on the elevator, dropped him off. In the lobby, two minutes later, that I would cops at the door, they knocking, like, wait, like, it was crazy, but yeah, case dismissed, you know, case dismissed, case dismissed, aggravated robbery, kidnapping, like, mm, when did I do that? You know, right. I didn't even know that was that. Like, how you saying I did that? Dog never came to court, you feel me? Like, he was a slime ball to begin with. And that's why, honestly, like, I just feel in his lifestyle, you have to, like, ever since then, I didn't switch up everything about my whole lifestyle, you know? Like, I ain't gotta just, you know, make plays. Just, oh, you know, like, if it ain't what I asked for, if it ain't yeah or better, I don't want it, you feel me? It's somebody else that's gonna do it for, you feel me, $50. I don't want, you feel me? Like I said, this is <laughs> early on my wrist, like, okay, I don't want it, like, yeah. Like, I just didn't switch up my whole game ever since then, you know? That and like just I don't I just been life lessons you know just life life lessons. That was just getting ready to be my next question. So what would you say is the biggest life lesson you learned so far in life? Biggest life lesson. Um, my biggest life lessons I, were three of them. One was when I caught the case. What we just talked about. Um, my first one though, when back in 2018, I was robbed and held at gunpoint by my own cousin. Um, and that just showed me, like, yeah, you can't trust nobody. Like, everybody is, you know, yeah, like, he dead now. You know, karma's a bitch. You know, I ain't got nothing, I ain't had nothing to do with it, but karma's a bitch. You know, it comes around, goes around. You can't do shit to bad people when somebody feeding you, yeah, like, that karma gonna come back around. Like, but that, cousin robbing me, catching the case. I forgot what the third life lesson was, but them two really, cause that just showed me you can't trust nobody and just, yeah, you know? You just can't trust nobody. Nobody is to be trusted. I see. Like, <laughs> you can't even trust your own mama. Like, I trust my mama, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I trust my mama, but yeah. Everybody is to be, yeah. So what would you say is the biggest obstacle you had to overcome so far? So far? Um, that's a good question. Honestly, just so far, just coming from having a pimp and then leaving and being on my own and, you know, having to run up bands and just figure out life. Um, and just trying to do everything independently, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know, like, I feel like I've pretty much had it good so far, probably, you know, a lot of bitches got it hard, I don't know. Maybe I got it a little good, but, yeah, that, just, you know, being able to get out of that world, you feel me? Most bitches, they come from having a pimp, and they be paying pimp to pimp to pimp to pimp to pimp. No, like, I've had my one experience, like, I'd rather have a boyfriend that's, like, spoiling me, and I'm catering to him. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, 
you know, just being a woman and being independent and strong, black at that and beautiful. <laughs> nah, for sure. So let's talk more about your brand, Politely Ratchet. Politely Ratchet, yeah, some of that. Politely Ratchet, pretty much, you know, I got the crown with the devil, the devil horns. Um, pretty much good, but sweet, sour, bad, sweet. <laughs> Good but bad, hood but ghetto, you feel me? Like, just classy but ghetto type shit. Polite, but I'm ratchet, like, you feel me? Like, I'm sweet, I'm humble, I'm cool peoples, but we can turn this shit up, don't fuck with me. Like I say, like, you know, the mug shot. You feel me? Like, I don't play that shit. Like, Jerry, you feel me? Like, bitch, for it, I don't. <laughs> when it comes to whatever, whatever it is you're trying to do, just don't play with me. Like, go do something else. Like. No, I feel that. <laughs> So when would you say you started making music? I started making music 2018. Um, a homie of mine, Chulo, shout out Chulo, he sent me a beat and was pretty much like just, and I didn't even know him, you feel me? He was just sent me three beats and was like, do something with it, you know? And I ended up with G shit. But my daddy, he was a rapper back in the day, back in, you know, 04 type time, RIP my daddy. You know, this is who I do it for. Like, this shit not on me, it's in me. Like, yeah, like, I ain't doing this shit for the trend. Like, we really do this shit. But ever since G shit, I just been applying pressure ever since then. Like, the video quality was just amazing. Like, just the feedback from it was, and ever since, you know, we four albums now, you know, two short voice. Album number four, you feel me? Number five, kind of soon. <laughs> <laughs> for real, but yeah. In the room. So as you mentioned earlier, your father was a rapper back in 04, 05. So did he know you had a passion for music as well before he passed away? Well, I was a little girl. He passed away when I was eight. So I know he happy to see where I'm at, you know, how I'm doing, like all of every, you know, thing I've been. But I just remember like, you know, like him doing his music stuff, like he died right before he was he was finna put his album out and he died right before he was able to put his albums out. But like, I just remember like him like, just doing the music shit in front of me type shit, passing me the mic, I'd be in a studio. Like he had like a trap house or whatever, some type of house, he had like a studio and I'd be like downstairs watching a little cartoon and he'd be upstairs making music. But yeah, I know he proud of me though. So that's, yeah, that's his, so that's his, his shit right here, that's his, yeah. That's real. My man. daddy's daughter. So besides your father, who would you list as some of your musical influences? Um, I love Jay Z, Fifty Cent, Lil Kim, of course, Nicki. Um, let we'll take this shit back to fucking Emil. You feel me? I love that New York style of music. It's honestly so many. I really love Jay Z and Fifty Cent, Nas, um, all the female rappers from back in the day. I love that old school music. You know, it's just um. I love Jay-Z and 50 Cent. They just do something for me. They, they different. Yeah. <laughs> Jay-Z, that whole Reasonable Doubt album, like, you feel me? Yeah, like, some of that. That's cold. <laughs> you don't never hear too many females talking about Reasonable Doubt being a respectable album. That's I'm cold. I'm 96, baby. I was born in 96. A lot of great and bad shit happened in 96. But yeah, that whole Reasonable Doubt album. Well, I, I remember I put on a J, I was in a car with a nigga one time that I would, and I put on some Jay-Z, he like, oh, I want to hear this. Like, what, what you, <laughs> what you mean? Like, this nigga can't get out of my car. Like, what you mean I want to hear this? Like, what you want to listen to your shit? <laughs> Ooh, piss me smooth off, oh, dog. Don't play with me. So when would you say you decided to take music serious full time? Honestly, I, G shit. I knew it was just gonna be full time. Like I knew it wasn't about to be oh, you feel me? Once you put money in something, why would you just stop? Like I didn't put a lot of you know bread behind my my talent, my brand, my craft, and everything that I do. Why would I stop? Stop for what? You feel me? Like I just knew this was gonna be serious because I was just so back to back to back for whatever reason. You know, just with this music stuff, I just had like a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, I was being robbed by my cousin and did me bad. I'd been in the house with my girlfriend, kids, and I was getting shot up. It was just, that was the other lesson. The, um, that was the other lesson that you <laughs> asked me earlier. Yeah. That I was getting shot up, it was a crazy man. But yeah, like, I would just have so much shit going on. It was just like, I gotta put this energy somewhere. Like, 
Plus, like, my sister wife, she just, my um, sister wife from, you know, when I was with Shake and stuff like that, we keep in contact. She just called me not too long ago. She was like, yeah, I remember you used to be in a car freestyling, you used to be rapping. I'm like, really? You feel me? I smoke a lot of weed. My memory bad. <laughs> so I'm like, really? Like, but I can believe it, of course, you know. Like, I used to always kind of like do like little rules, but yeah, like this, like I said, this Emmy ain't on me. No, nah, for real. No. We just can't just skip over what you just said. So you was staying with your girlfriend and your house got shot up with her kids in it? Oh, oh my God. We at the crib. I'm at my girlfriend's house at the time. You know, my homegirl, shout out Tess. If it ain't Tess, yeah, yeah. We at the crib. Oh, my God. Kids at the house. What I remember, you know, long story short type shit. You know, I ain't gonna cap though. Earlier that day, we was like on Facebook arguing with some folks out because niggas was mad about some shit. You know, that Facebook shit, it, it do get real. I ain't gonna cap. But later in the day, we at the house, we chilling, you know, kids. I remember letting in the neighbor's kid. I'm letting him in. As soon as I close the door, all I hear is boom, 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 boom. You feel me? Like, and I'm just so sick because my shit was upstairs. Like, I'm sick, I was lacking. Like, what, like, how did this even, you feel me? Like, but that shit was just so traumatizing. That was the, uh, yeah, like, this shit get real, shit get real, like, shit get real, you know? And that should be off the, the folks that I was associated with. You know, when you associate with certain folks, you know, you gain certain type of, you know, so. Yeah, you I know. I feel that. So what do you feel like brings the best out of you and your music? Um, what brings the best? The originality, um, just the uniqueness, just the message. I feel like I'm the messenger, you feel me? Like the lesson, you know, I'm, I feel like I'm able to give my lessons to other girls. I know that because I actually I have girls that tell me like, yeah, like you're like a sister that I've always needed, you know, like, yeah, you feel me? Like, bitches so used to being, they used to hearing about being a side chick and swallowing whoever's nut and that I know, like, come over here, come over to politely ratchet, I'm gonna get you together, like, you know? But yeah, I just be myself, I'm Deja Doll, you feel me? Like. Mm -hmm. it's just, it don't get no better than this. I feel that. <laughs> Pop it. It don't get no better. So how would you describe opening up for Gucci Mane? And how did that happen? That was big. That was big. <laughs> um, that was my first performance. I am the first lady to perform on a Youngstown's amphitheater stage. So I'm a legend already. You feel me type shit. That was just, the opportunity was, opportunity was presented to me. And you know, of course I had to take it. But it was just so dope, cause it was my first performance. Like I was doing, I think of music for like a good year at that time. And for that to be like my first big performance, you know, that was just so dope. And you know, after that, I really just couldn't stop. Oh, you just opened up a Gucci Mane, what you about to stop for? No, we gotta keep going. It's like, you feel me, it's just, that was big though. It was a good experience, I enjoyed that. I was, I think I was off at Adderall. <laughs> Calling the nerds, you know, we be all the perks and the addy, we hear some of that. <laughs> so how would you describe your current thoughts on the rap game? Um, my current thoughts, like I said earlier, like honestly, I feel like motherfuckers just so used to being, they, to being, they used to hearing about being a side chick and oh, who they fucking so-and-so nigga and da-da, woo-woo-woo. I'm not fucking nobody, nigga, if you ain't got no money for me, you feel me, you not, you feel me, but I just feel like, I mean, bitches are doing their thing, though, you feel me, other than that, other than, you know, but sex sales, so, you know, do that shit, but, yeah, I mean, women is taking over shit, you know, um, yeah, they're doing better than niggas right now, actually. <laughs> Not for real. Yeah, we doing better than niggas, right? now. We, up, we up some points, you know, yeah, but... Yeah, I fuck with it, you know. Female rap game is definitely, you know, and I'm just, you know, finna get to where I'm, you know, gotta be at. Yeah. You know, and bring something so different, just so, you know, just so different, just so unique, and just so politely ratchet. You know, something people ain't never seen before. Nah, for real, I fuck with that. 
<laughs> so what would you say is the biggest risk you took for your career that paid off? Um, the biggest risk that I've took for my career? Um, I mean, that's a good question because I just all I do is take risk. Like everything I do is take risks from just, you feel me, just every, everything is just a risk. Like, like trusting people, like nowadays you can't trust certain like promoters or like people that say they got plugs to do this, that I will like. I've had my song played on Shade 45 for like two months, um, I think like last year. And it was just like, that was like a lesson. Like I didn't know at first, like I could, I would be able to trust Do, but I took that risk and I, you know, took the opportunity and it came out on top, you know, my shit playing on Shade 45, you know, Series XM, you know, and people hearing it, like, you know, I gained feedback from it, followers and stuff like that from that. But just honestly, just trusting people, cause you just can't trust people. Like, like everything is just, um, you know, but everything's a risk, honestly. Everything that I do is a risk. My whole life is a, one big risk. <laughs> It's a risky in this way. <laughs> so why do you think people overlook the talent that comes out of Youngstown? Um, that's a good question. Why do I feel like people overlook? Um, I feel like why? Because Youngstown really don't support each other, you know, as they should, you know, me personally. I don't see no coming together. I'm not coming together with niggas, you feel me? Like, y'all be booing with the ops. I'm not coming together with nobody, like, you feel me? So it just, it's, they can come together, kumbaya, you feel me? But I'll be over here, you know, by my side of the But <laughs> it just really ain't no support, like I said before. Like, some people, they get support, but, you know, I feel like a lot of times we get compared to Detroit. Like, everybody think I'm from Detroit. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio. But I fuck with that vibe, though, you feel me? I love the music, like, one big example, Peasy, like, I had a chance to do some music with him, and it's just like, so, like, I enjoy seeing how far he done came. He done been doing music for a minute now, you feel me? Like, he told me, like, just don't quit type shit. So it's just like, I forgot what I was saying, but, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so let's talk about your new project, <laughs> Fuck Y'all. Fuck Y'all. <laughs> what a bitch gonna do? <laughs> What the hell gonna say? Okay, let me, let me. Y'all gotta get this. And that should be getting the best of me. So, <laughs> my new project, Fuck Y'all, available everywhere. Honestly, just how did it come about? Just last year, like I said, I lost three homies in a matter of four months and that shit can really, you feel me, just bring such a dark cloud. Like, fuck everybody, you feel me? Because one minute it's like, you know, niggas is cool, you know, rapping. Like, two of my homies, you know, was rappers. Woo -woo. Long, you know, RIP Long Money, RIP Crazy Chris. But it's just like, niggas be rapping your lyrics, you know, my dog lyrics, and then go be booling with the ops type shit. Like, what? Like, fuck y'all, you feel me? Like, Bitches want to hang with me, they want to, but don't never support, share, but you want to fuck y'all, you feel me? Like, just, yeah, like, motherfuckers be playing both sides, no, fucking with the ops, now we can't rock, you feel me? Like, no, like, fuck y'all, fuck everybody, like, yeah, like, I love who I love, though, don't get that wrong, I love who I love, but fuck y'all, like, it's just, the envy and the hate just be so real, like, and it just be having you in that, yeah. Fuck y'all, fuck everybody, fuck the world. You feel me? You know, I'm gonna still, but fuck y'all. Yeah. <laughs> For real, <laughs> G. On my mama. What would you say is your personal favorite song from the project? My personal favorite from the project. Ooh, because there's some good ones on there. You got fuck y'all, 15 minutes, some of that. I ain't gonna cap, I love 15 minutes. I love 15 minutes because it's just so real and so raw and so, you know, just so uncut. I'm like, niggas get to claim you. You don't even know they ass. There's some risky in this wood. Yeah, I'm blowing back. I ain't have to set the play. Karma was on his ass. $20 lip gloss when I hit a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> VVS is on my neck. Yeah, some of that. You feel me type shit. I love 15 minutes because it's just. It would start out as a freestyle type shit. Like I had like 15 minutes left in the studio. <laughs> so 
So I still want, you know, when you utilize them 15 minutes, so I just started on some like, give me 15 minutes, woo woo. Then I came back later, 18 hours later on some, it was just, yeah, I love 15 minutes. It's just so real. My music is just so raw and just uncut, you know, it's just so different. You know, I really get at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fuck with it. You feel me? You know, you like this shit different, you know. I'm on the land, I'm enjoying myself. I met Nelly the other day, it's my celebrity crush. <laughs> if y'all can, yeah. <laughs> you know, I be, I enjoy Atlanta, I enjoy being out here, you feel me? Like, it's just the vibe, the, just everything about it, it's just black Hollywood, you know. But I be on the road though, you feel me? I fuck with South Dakota a lot type shit, you feel me? I love it out there, it's peaceful, it's quiet, you know. The white money on that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> weak G, you funny. So talk to us about your grind as an independent artist. <laughs> Put the <water. laughs> My grind as an independent artist, honestly, like if you look at the word dedication in the dictionary, like you're gonna see my face because I'm really dedicated to this shit. Like I really put Everything that you see, that you hear, that I, that's all me, you feel me? Like, I don't want you in my life if you're not about to contribute to what I got, because I'm cool, you feel me? Like, we good, but if you're not about to contribute to this greatness that we got going on, like, if you, you feel me? Like, you can't be part of my life, I'm cool. Like, I didn't, yeah, like, I really do this shit. And I do it for the fans, you feel me? I do it for the people that really listen, you feel me? Like, because there, there's people that really listen to what, you feel me, what, I, what I'm saying, like, so I really just do it for them and just trying to, you know, just get this shit to where I gotta be at. But I've put a lot of backbone behind this shit. And I enjoy it, you know? You know, you see where we at. No cap. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so what's some of the goals you got set for yourself for the new year? Um, For the new year, honestly, just continue to get this music pushed out. Just continue to keep my foot. You said, man, where they been? You feel me? <laughs> you know, like, just continue just to work with more people. Just continue to just go fucking harder, you know? Like, I've already been going hard since 2018. It's 2022 now, you feel me? Like, you know, the corona shit, and, but we, yeah, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> for real, like, just to keep stepping, like, yeah, just keep putting out shit. You feel me? I'm back to back queen. Like I've been back to back. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Let's do and it. And that's that. Politely ratchet. You feel me? Some of that. Any last words and shout outs? Um, I just wanna say stop fucking pound sign. Stop fucking for free. The price is right. Um, politely ratchet. I thank my mama. Um, make sure y'all check me out on YouTube, Deja Doll, D A J S H A D O L L. Instagram, D-A-J-S-H-A-D-O-L-L underscore P-R, Deja Doll underscore P-R. Um, everywhere, Deja Doll, Google me, Deja Doll. Um, yeah, shop, politely ratchet. Um, yeah, I just wanna thank y'all for having me here. You feel me, whole lot of yeah, yeah, going on. <laughs> for sure, Deja Doll, we appreciate having you today. <laughs>